Who doesn't want to run for longer or further than they can currently manage? I know I certainly do. I mean, it's human nature to want to improve at something and run stamina is no different. But to do that, you're going to need to follow a structured training plan and build your run mileage up gradually, amongst many other things. In fact, there's actually quite a lot to consider, which is where I'm going to come in and help you today. So stamina, the ability to sustain prolonged physical or mental effort. I mean, that certainly covers the demands required for most running events. So with that in mind, I'm gonna cover all aspects required for developing our stamina, but in particular, obviously, our running stamina. Before I do, if you're not doing so already, please give the channel a subscribe and support us here at GTN. And if you're feeling generous, give this video a like. So one of the quickest and easiest fixes is with our intensity. If we're to do something at a lower intensity, we can normally do it for longer. And it's no different with running. So for this, you wanna make sure that you're staying in zone two or lower. In terms of heart rate, this is around 70 to 80% of our max heart rate. This means that we're staying aerobically whilst working and therefore not producing as much lactate. It means that we're not producing lactate at a greater rate than our body can process. Therefore, our body isn't getting overwhelmed with it and therefore then slowing us down. It also means that actually by working at this intensity, we're using fat more so as fuel rather than glycogen which is limited and stored in our muscles and liver. Now to gauge this effort obviously you can go by heart rate as I've just mentioned but personally actually I just like to go by feel. So does it feel comfortable but also there's the little conversation test. If you're running with someone else you can have a little chat with them. Chat away and you should be able to do that nice and comfortably. If you can't then you need to slow it down. And actually by doing this over long periods of time, we should see some great physiological changes that will actually make us far more efficient runners. So by training at this zone two intensity, it will actually trigger our bodies to create more capillaries, which are the small vessels that carry our oxygenated blood to the working muscles and therefore also the waste products and deoxygenated blood away from them. Essentially, by improving that network, we are gonna make ourselves more efficient. We're getting more oxygen from our lungs to those muscles. Also, should see an increase in mitochondria, enabling more energy to be generated. Now, I've already touched on the fact that you can use fat as fuel, but that doesn't mean we should totally neglect our nutrition. In fact, if you really want to further your running and your running stamina, you need to make sure that you're fueling adequately, both before, during, and also after our runs. Now, our muscles need glucose in order to function and work and for us to run. So it means that we need to make sure that we're replenishing those stores. And typically we say runs that are over 60 minutes are going to require some fueling. Now, how that fueling or that food looks is entirely up to you. You need to make sure that you can carry it whilst you're running and you can digest it whilst running and on the go. And also an important point is you are replenishing in advance rather than waiting until they're depleted. Otherwise, you are really gonna hinder your progress. And also you want to think about your hydration. It goes without saying, the further you run, the more you're going to perspire and sweat. And dehydration can have a significant impact on your performance. So make sure you're taking on fluids whilst you're running and also practice taking hydration on whilst you run. And then finally, I did mention at the start about fueling both before and after. So you wanna make sure that your nutrition is on point. Think of your body like an engine. The better the fuel going in, the more efficiently it's going to run. Another area to consider with our running is the fact that running is essentially repetitive movements, which requires strength. And obviously we get stronger through running, but we can also fast track that to a degree by supplementing our running training with some additional strength work. Now a key area with this is our core. 
the more active or the stronger our core is when we run, the easier we should find it to move our legs, they will be more efficient, which becomes a bigger factor as we get tired, as we start to run for longer. Obviously, other than just the core, we can focus on other areas. You can do things like single leg exercises, and that can really highlight any imbalances or weaknesses. And another area to consider with strength training is actually plyometrics, so jumping and explosive movements. Now our tendons kind of act like coils or springs that help with that energy return when running. So doing explosive movements, body weight movements, can really help to improve and increase our tendon strength and its elasticity, which in turn will help our efficiency when running. Now, of course, I'm not suggesting you suddenly start doing hours and hours of gym work and strength work per week but even just a few minutes here and there, or at the very least, some activation prior to your runs can make a big difference. Now, if you remember back to the beginning of the video, I mentioned that stamina refers to our body's ability to sustain not only physical effort, but also mental effort. And I thought this was quite interesting because it really highlights the power of the mind. A positive mindset can really help and allow us to break through barriers that maybe we didn't think were possible or deemed possible before. Now, of course, when you're running further or longer than you ever have done before, it's natural to have doubts, to question your body's ability. And even during the run, you might have periods of doubt again. You may become bored. And we often get this question through. How do we keep ourselves entertained and distracted whilst we're running? And well, there is no magic answer here. I mean, it's totally personal. It may be that you break the run up into segments. You you get distractions like music, podcasts, run with friends, chat away. I personally quite like planning new routes and exploring, distracting myself in that way. The list goes on, so find what works for you and go with it. Now, earlier on, I mentioned that if you want to run further or for longer, you need to drop the intensity down. And this is very much the case for a majority of your runs, they should be at this lower intensity. But you may also want to include a little bit of higher intensity work too. This is training smart. Now whilst running at an easier intensity, you will see gains and improvements in your fitness. You'll be able to run further, longer. You may even be able to see your pace increase or you find it easier at the same pace. However, to really take it up another level or if in fact you find yourself plateauing with your pace and your progress, then this is where higher intensity work can come in. It really just helps to lift that ceiling up. So this just requires short efforts at higher intensity with good recoveries in between, allowing you to keep repeating those higher intensities. Maybe just one run per week or every other week can really help with that. And now also my final point, which probably should have been my first point, is to enjoy yourself. Enjoying running will actually allow you just to get back out. You're gonna enjoy going out, doing more runs, running for longer, and in turn, you'll see greater progress over time. And that's a real key one. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Best of luck with your running. Let us know how you get on in the comment section down below. And see you next time.